has just explained, we are final year physiotherapy students from UniSA. So we get the opportunity to come out and be supervised by Rhiannon um, to work with some of the students who are transitioning from high school into their day options or employment options next year. Um, so we will be here for five weeks, so we're actually finishing tomorrow and there'll be a new set of students coming in for another five weeks. So through that time, um, we get to work with the students doing physical activity and trying to help them with strength and balance and sometimes flexibility um, in order to make sure they're really safe in the community and they can actually participate in some of those options that they'll be going to next year. Um, we've been really lucky with our five weeks to actually see firsthand some of the benefits that exercise have had for the children with autism and so we'd really like to share that with you so that that can be, um, I guess, transitioned into home and what they're doing next year. Um, so specifically over the last five weeks, we've been in the classroom one-on-one -on -one with a lot of the students and we've also gone out into the community with them and their classes. Um, in the community we get to see them walking over different surfaces, we get to see how they go when they're using stairs to make sure that they're safe in those situations. Um, we see how their endurance is, so when they're delivering papers or catalogues for example, if they get tired throughout um, and if there's anything we can do to help them with that. There are other things that can be assessed as well, so when they're using stairs, does it change how they use the stairs if they've got a bag on them, those kind of things. Um, once we know how capable they are in the community, we can then target some of these things in the gym. So if they are having issues with coordinating themselves um, with stairs in the community, we can then work on that in the gym. So things like balance and going up and down stairs requires a lot of strength, so we might include strengthening exercises for them as well. Um, the other thing we can do with endurance, so often we think of increasing endurance with running and a lot of students won't be able to do that, so we can incorporate exercises on the trampoline, so jumping, maybe even just marching will help get their heart rate up and really, um, I guess, get them used to going for longer periods of time. When we're working on coordination, we can make it a lot more fun. So we try and incorporate things like Twister and coming up with other games that will help them with their stepping and the ability to go up and down the stairs, climbing over A-frames. So as much as it seems like they're just having fun, they're actually having to think about how they coordinate their bodies and we can help them with where they're putting their hands and their feet and make it a lot easier for them. Um, when we get in the classroom, we tend to um, spend time with the children who have higher needs, so the children that are in wheelchairs and can't necessarily get out in the community and do some of the things that we're doing. Um, we like to maintain the range of motion that they have through their joints so that they're still able to participate with their transfers um, and we can also help with their strength so that they can um, still have strong bones and they're able to help and assist a little bit as well with their transfers. Um, what else do we do in there? The other thing that's really useful once we're in the classroom is seeing what the teachers and the SSOs are doing with the students as well and we can actually extend their knowledge in terms of how they do the transfer, what kind of exercises they could help them with in terms of range of, mo range of motion through their joints and helping with their strength as well and it just keeps the teachers safe they can then pass the information on to the parents and that helps them stay safe as well with those transfers. Um, over the entire year we have physiotherapy students and occupational therapy students here from UNSA and this year we've been working together to compile a lot of options for what the students will be doing next year. So whether that includes things like um, just day options, going participating in community events or looking at what other things they could be doing in terms of employment and sometimes living options as well. So that's going to become one book and future, um, I guess, years that are graduating will have access to that and it'll make it kind of a one-stop shop to be able to go and work out what is available for next year once they finish school. Um, a lot of people, I guess, 
think of occupational therapy as being a really useful thing for children with autism. Um, but there's actually a lot that physiotherapy can do as well, which is what we're trying to, I guess, put into the school at the moment. Um, what we do know is that children with autism tend to have less activation in the areas of their brain that helps us motor plan and coordinate ourselves to do things. So it's something as simple that we think is simple to get in and out of a car or to climb stairs it actually requires quite a lot of steps. And it's not until you actually sit back and think about it and go, oh, there are a lot of things in that one movement that I think that I'm doing. Um, you don't realise how complicated it is. So for us, it becomes an unconscious thing. But for children with autism, they actually think on a really conscious level. So for them, they're going through all the steps. So I need to lift my foot up, put it into the car, and then need to bend my knee and sit back down. So it is a little bit more complicated. And that's something that physios, who are experts in movement and development, can actually help with um, in terms of making it easier on their attentional demand. They're not actually having to focus on it so much as they get used to practicing some of those movements that we kind of take for granted every day. Um, the other thing that really helps with that, apart from just practicing all these movements, like I said before, is having the strength to be able to do it. So if they're actually having deficits in some muscle groups of their bodies, it makes it really hard to perform. And so if we can focus on what isn't really working too well for them, essentially that movement will become easier and we can practice those patterns after the strength has built up. A lot of this is done for children, no matter what age they are, through play. So it's not necessarily, okay, you're gonna do 10 reps of these. We actually get them going up and over an A-frame or jumping on the trampoline, like I said. So it's a bit more interesting for them as well. And once they can actually do a lot more of these movements and they're feeling stronger and safer in the community, it helps them participate a lot more, especially once they finish school and they don't have access to going into the community with um, their classes as, as well. Um, so exercise is a, a really important part of, I guess, growing up and even once we become adults. And there are a lot of guidelines set around exercise. Um, the government actually has these all on their Department of Health website, so they're freely available to everybody. And they're laid out so that children 5 to 17 should be getting at least 60 minutes a day of exercise. Children don't have to do it all at once though. So they could do a few minutes in the morning, they can do the rest at school and then a little bit more after school. The biggest thing to come out of that is to try and limit some of that screen time that they have, which is really difficult for children with autism because they really fixate on something and like you said, you re they really enjoy going on the computer and the iPad. So if we can just break up some of those moments, then that, I guess, is a lot more useful. They don't necessarily have to go outside and play for an hour. At least get up and move around a little bit. Um, the other thing that's really important as well is it's not just about getting that moderate and vigorous exercise, which we think of as walking or riding a bike. It's also about strengthening our muscles and our bones. So that really helps for us, our health later in life and limit some of these things like osteoporosis. Um, once we become adults, you have to do a bit more exercise and so a lot of the students who are in um, the transition program that we're with, they will be classified as an adult next year and so they need to be thinking about how they can get more of that activity or physical activity into their days. So they really need to be doing about two and a half hours of moderate exercise a week um, and then they need to be doing vigorous exercise like running. So getting their heart rate up and breathing really fast. And that's why we've had a look at some of the um, programs in the community that can help them have access to that. Because once they're not at school anymore, they don't have their scheduled gym sessions anymore. Um, so I think Charlotte has a little bit of information about autism as well and exercise. Yep, so another role of physiotherapy or a large part of our role is research. Some physios devote their entire time to research and they look at the underlying knowledge gaps and try to fill them in through funded research and grants. Um, so the rest of us use their research to help, um, I guess, drive our treatment. Um, so we specifically had a look at the benefits of exercise on children with autism. And there's actually a large range of benefits, both physical and um, on the behaviour and cognitive uh, levels as well. So I've got a couple of them listed up here. 
the physical um, side Erin's pretty much touched on with the increasing strength and endurance and helping them later in life. But exercise actually helps decrease their self-regulatory behaviour. It increases their academic performance, their ability to concentrate, and we have actually been fortunate enough to see that whilst in class. We do a little bit of exercise with them in the mornings and then get to go into class and we can see that there is a decrease in their self-regulatory behaviour and how long they're concentrating for. And it's a really rewarding process to see just in that short 15 minute exercise program that it's already showing the benefits. So long term, you hopefully see a more long term benefit of the increased uh, concentration levels and um, academic performance. So we've had a look at some of the high level evidence um, documents and they have done some extensive research on the types of exercises that are beneficial to the students or children and how long those benefits actually last. So they all pretty much conclusively say any, any exercise that gets a child's heart rate up, so that can be walking, running, riding a bike, playing table tennis, simply performing a couple of movements from sitting to standing up like 20 times in a row and then repeating that three times over actually uh, increases all of the benefits that I listed before from anywhere up to an hour to across two days. So it, it does have a huge benefit and would help them later in life with their, job, their jobs and their day options as well as currently in the classroom. So we've got some exercises. Yeah, so you. we've got some exercises that you can do at home. We've also been running a session for one of the students as well. So we've actually used a lot of these exercises with him. And basically a session always includes a warm-up strength, a little bit of cardio, core and flexibility. Um, so what we're going to go through is some strengthening exercises because they're things that can be done really easily at home. And some of the other things like cardiovascular, um, where you get your heart rate up, those things can be done more in the community and we've offered some um, options that you can use, we'll go through those later. Um, so we've tried to make it really easy, so you can do them at home with no equipment apart from just a chair for example, um, and then Charlotte will go through some with a fit ball, so if you wanted to make it a little bit different, you could possibly get hold of one of those and see how you go, so I'll give you a bit of a demonstration. So first up, like I said, we always want to have a bit of a warm up. So we can do that sitting down or standing up. Sitting down, we'll do a bit of a march. So all of these are in that handout that we've given you. Um, yeah, maybe on the next page. So if you just do some marching on the spot, just in the chair, that's something that's quite safe and easy for children to do, especially if they're not really comfortable with moving their bodies too much initially. If you can get your hands going as well, that's gonna get even more muscle groups in to make you um, get your heart rate up quicker and it warms you up quicker. So then you can do it standing up if they're fine with standing up as well. You can alternate this with what we call a sit to stand. So it's literally just sitting on a chair and then standing back up. So if you do this over and over and over again for 30 seconds, it's going to get you really, really warm. So if you do 30 seconds of marching, 30 seconds of that, you've got all of your muscle groups nice and warm. You can change this exercise to be a little bit more challenging. So you can do your standard sit to stand like this. But then you can also do it slowly coming up. It's gonna work your muscles on your way up against gravity. And then you can lower yourself down slowly. So if you find it's getting really easy to go up, down, up, down, you can make it a little bit more challenging for them by saying once you're up, go down really slowly. How long can you go before you get your bottom on the chair? And that's just gonna make their muscles work even harder. Um, the next one that you can do sitting on a chair would be straightening your leg out. So this one is working the muscles at the front of your leg. So you're just using, I guess if you've got a shoe on, that's a little bit of weight against gravity. You can do the same thing. So go slowly down or slowly up. And then you can do that on both sides. So we've got that one in the picture. If you're getting really good at that, you can add in a TheraBand. Um, so these are just a stretchy elastic band that you can put around the body part that you're using against something like a chair or a table leg. And it makes it really hard. And I realised when I did this that I used a harder TheraBand, so now it looks like it's really, really difficult. 
but it does actually change it and you can buy them in different colours which changes how hard you have to work for it. Um, so while you're sitting down I'll also show you another one that's quite important we find with some children that they do what we call a foot slap so when you're walking the foot slaps the ground and makes quite a loud noise. Children will either do that because of sensory reasons so they want to really feel the ground touching their foot but sometimes they just have really weak muscles at the front of their leg. So we can work these just by lifting our foot up like this. And it seems really easy when you first start doing it, but when you keep doing it 10 times, you start to really feel that burn at the front. So this is the muscle that lifts our toes up. So when we're walking, we can clear our foot when we swing our leg through so that we're not tripping over. So if there's that tendency to be a little bit weak there, that's what can be a little bit unsafe when you're walking. You can add in the TheraBand for this one as well. So, you put it around the outside foot, you can then work that one. So then you've got quite a lot of resistance. Same thing, you can go fast up, slow down, or the other way around as well. The next one that you can do, so we can do them standing up, holding onto the chair, and it just makes it a little bit safer. So it's called a hamstring curl. So the hamstring's at the back of your leg, and you just bring your leg up into an L shape, and then back down. If you have a mirror at home, it can really help to do it in front of the mirror so that you can see where your body is actually going. Same thing again, you can go really slowly on the way down, or you can go slowly on the way up. If you've got your TheraBand, you can also add that in. While you're standing here, we can work the muscle at the back of your legs, so going up onto your toes. So this is another one that really helps with walking as well. I'm getting really warm doing these already. <laughs> I haven't even done my full pen. <laughs> um, the other one that is quite important as well when we walk are the muscles around our hips and pelvis. So we want to make sure that that's all really strong. So you can do them in sitting. So some children might not have really good balance. So sitting is the safest way to do it. So it does help sometimes to cue to hold onto your knee so that you can guide where your leg goes because you want it to come out to the side and you want to feel it in the... I guess in the side of your bottom. So if you're doing that, holding it like this. If that's really easy for them, or if they're tending to, I guess, lean to the side, have a go standing up. It does get a bit harder. So holding onto the chair and then just bringing your leg out to the side. And really squeezing through here will help you activate that muscle that's pulling your leg out to the side. Same thing, you can hold it out there and come in really slowly, or you can go out really slowly and then come back in. Um, and then, because we're already kind of onto balance when you're standing like that, balance is a really good one to practice at home and you can make it competitions with each other so that it's a little bit more fun. Um, so you can start off, this one's probably a, the easiest option, is to put one foot in front of the other. If that's too hard initially, you can have your foot a little bit wider, you can have it right in front but not touching the toe. So ideally, eventually, we'd get to the point where your toe is touching. You can hold on with both hands. Then you can start to take one hand off. You can do it with your eyes closed, which makes it quite challenging as well. And then you can also move on to doing it on one leg. So this might be something that you do before you start doing these exercises to build up that confidence with standing on one leg. Same thing, you can make it a competition. So can you hold it for 10 seconds? Who's going to hold it longest? Can you do it with your eyes closed? those kind of things. Um, so Charlotte's got some with the fit ball as well, so that just changes it up a little bit. So the fit ball is more challenging because it offers an unstable surface. And I say it's more challenging because um, when you are placed on an unstable surface, you have something come into play that we call postural control, which means um, it's your body's ability to maintain you standing or sitting upright and by having an uneven surface behind us, it engages our core, which is really, really important for a lot of the daily activities that we do. And without core strength, you'll find that there's a lot of um, strength deficits in a lot of the exercises or daily activities that we do. So if your child finds the chair quite challenging, I wouldn't recommend the fit ball until they've built themselves up a little bit. 
Um, I find this quite hard that the ball is relatively small for me. So if you have a smaller child, I would recommend a ball about this size. Or if you have someone who's about to transition into the community, you probably look at a bigger one. So I have got marching, just like Erin. <laughs> and if they're kind of in between the stage of able to march on a chair and able to stand in marching, but not quite able to do it on the fit ball and stay safely balanced like this, I would recommend wedging it between the wall and two other stable surfaces like that, so two heavy chairs either side, and that way they can practice standing on one leg, they can have their arms out to the side and just march like that. And as you can see, I'm swaying from side to side because it's incorporating other muscle groups in my body. And it's really important to try and stay up nice and tall because that gets us to squeeze our tummy muscles together and also our back muscles so our spine stays nice and supported. And if we're strengthening the muscles through our core and through our back as well, it's very common for autistic children and also students to have a very hunched over posture and that will help with that as well. So I have put the um, reps on the handout for you so you can see how many times you could do that. That's a warm up and a um, strengthening type ex exercise as well. I've got one that's a little bit, it's coordination and can also use the warm up so I've got the ball and stepping out like that. It's more of an aerobic type exercise. If they find that quite hard, you can just step to the side and build up to working to going out to the side or you can just use both and eventually incorporate it in. It is something that students who struggle with motor planning would find quite difficult, but it's also a way to encourage their motor planning. Um, sorry. I have for another warm up. Again, they would need to be quite stable with this one. So this one is a squat, a wall squat, and it's quite, it's an exercise that a lot of people find quite difficult to do because it recruits a lot of muscles. So we call it a compound exercise, and that means that we use a lot of muscles. And the more muscles we use, the more blood is required, so our heart rate has to be even faster. So you want to squish the ball between your lower back and the wall and slowly bend down. You want to make sure that your knees don't go out over your toes and then you come back. And doing this a few times, I'm already getting quite warm and I can already feel the burn in my legs. So it's a really great way to develop strength in multiple areas and also get up your cardiovascular fitness. Have a balance exercise that you can again wedge up against a wall if they're not that confident and you can wedge between chairs to either side so they can't actually roll very far. So with your legs nice and wide apart, you put your arms out like this and you move to side like that. It challenges their postural control again and their ability to coordinate and stay upright and again engaging the muscles through here. As I mentioned before, core is really, really important and I've got some exercises that help with those. So lying down on your back tilting your legs out towards the side. It's really going to target the muscles of the core down the side of their body. And it's actually quite challenging. And the slower you go, the harder it is. And I've got a cool one as well. So you can squeeze the ball in between your legs and lift it up. Squeeze the ball between your legs and lift it up. And then bring it up. This is quite hard to do as it is, but you can make it harder by passing the ball. Again, helps with core and motor planning. And then another strengthening one is kind of like the wall sit, uh, sorry, the squat, but it's a wall sit. So you sit there and you try and hold it for as long as you possibly can. And Erin said before, you can turn it into a competition to see how long you can hold it for. And if you write it down, you've got a time to be, and it can be a really good way of progressing the exercise. Okay, I'm rather warm now. <laughs> mm. oh. Yes, yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so apart from trying some of those at home,
we have gone out into the community to try and find some things that are accessible to all of the students who might be transitioning. They do cater for lots of different ages, so a lot of these will actually go from, say, six and up, um, and into adulthood as well. So one of the ones that you could have a look at is Novita Fitness. So this is offered by Novita. Um, they're all in the handout that we've provided as well. So these are physio-led sessions. Um, they only have six people in a class, so it's really well supervised, and each student will have a individualised session beforehand, so all of their exercises are for them. So they will be doing things like what we've shown you. There'll be other things like push-ups and bridges, so lots of different activities as well as cardio kind of exercises as well in that. So it's for 10 to 18 years of age. So um, you know, up until they're an adult, they can participate in this program. It's fifty-eight dollars and fifty-three cents a session, but this is all covered by NDIS as well. Um, and there are quite a few different places that you can go. So Elizabeth GP Plus offer it. The Lodge offers it. And um, it's also at Regency Park at No Beaches offices there. Um, the other one that we looked into was martial arts. There are a few different um, places that you can go to, but we did speak to Next Generation Taekwondo. So they have a class for special needs kids. Um, it's not just students with autism. There are um, students who have visual deficits and those kind of things as well. So it is um, a well-rounded kind of class. They give you a trial session to begin with for $20. So you can go in and try and if your child is not interested at all, they don't have to go back. But they are covered by NDIS as well. Um, and it's a really nice way for students to build their strength and fitness, but stay focused and be in a really social environment as well. Um, gym Sense is by YMCA. Um, this is gymnastics, so it's for a variety of ages as well for children with autism. So they have things like trampolines and swings there, so it can be really good for some of the sensory processing um, issues for those children, as well as building some of that strength, balance, coordination. And it's a really fun activity for them to do as well. It's not um, covered by NDIS when you're there, but you can claim it back from NDIS. Um, you can buy casual sessions or you can go by the term, so you can do your full 10 weeks school. Um, the other one that we went to was occupational therapy for children. They have a new gym called OTFC Plus and it is designed for teenagers in mind. So kids with bigger bodies, they've got swings, they've got monkey bars, they've got a climbing wall, they have a really big trampoline there with a foam pit so they can jump in but they also have a basketball court, um, what have they got? Table tennis. They've got an outdoor section as well. And um, it just gives them somewhere fun to go because as a lot of these kids get older, some of the therapy rooms are getting smaller and smaller for them and they don't actually get, I guess, you know, enough room to have a really good swing in there. So this gym is really good for that. It's all NDIS funded and they, um, it's an individualised session with an OT. So there's always someone there supervising supervising their therapy. It's brand new as well, so everything is state of the art. No expense spared in that place. Um, there's also Lolly Jar Circus, and they cater for all children, uh, so mainstream and disabilities. I was quite interested reading this. Um, they are a circus school who run a circus program uh, the trainers all have a circus or a gymnastics background and they train um, students up in circus type performances so they encourage students to balance and plan their motor skills but all in sort of a circus -y themed way so everything can be modified um, to the students abilities so they say they can be tumbling so that is anything from rolling down of from wedge like a log to doing back bends and flips but obviously they wouldn't be pushing anybody to do anything that they weren't physically capable of doing everybody is rewarded for what they do and receives applause in that environment 
They strongly encourage uh, students to understand the value of participation and also that it's okay to fail as long as you get up and try again. Um, we've got the City West uh, Clinic that's run by UniSA. Um, we've got one at City West, which is in the North Terrace campus on the west side of the city. They are catered for any student from 0 to 17 years of age and they offer individual physiotherapy sessions. So they'll go under an, undergo an initial assessment and physios will determine what would the child would most benefit from and structure a program based on strength in the areas of that, their deficits and the balance if it's required. It is a student-run clinic but it's under full supervision of a fully qualified and experienced physio. So the benefit of it being a student clinic is that it did cost $10 a session. So it's a little bit of a travel, but it is very cheap therapy. Um, another physio clinic is out at McGill for Motor to the Max, and they take on four to eight year olds. And it's a five week block where they teach um, motor planning and gross motor skills for students who have a little bit of a developmental delay. <coughs> We were fortunate enough to have placement out there and it was a fantastic experience. And then we have YMCA LEAP program and they have a database of over 8,000 services and you pick up the phone and you ring them and you say, my child has this level of disability, they need this much support and I would like them to participate in horse riding. And then they will take it upon themselves to do all of the like, dirty work for you and find out exactly what it is that you need and who's going to fund it and that's all covered by NDIS. So all you have to do is ask and they'll make it happen for you. So we've got a couple of pictures from some of the gyms that we went to. So this kind of shows some of the swings that are in the space, one of their therapy rooms and the big foam pit for the trampoline. That's an OTSC plus. And then Lolly Jar Circus shows all of their trapeze and their big gymnasium. They have um, locations across five places in Adelaide and they hire out function rooms at gyms like the ARC Campbelltown Centre and they'll take all of the equipment there and set it up the way that they need to. So that's it. Have you got any questions? Um, this uh, presentation has um, mentioned a lot about autism. Um, at the school there are several different other disability groups. So. The um, all the exercises, the information is that also probably applicable to kids like with Downs. Yeah. Or is it very different? You know, it's sort of it's <laughs> not too dissimilar. Yeah. Um, I mean, the benefits of exercise for children with autism is that it does help with some of the self-regular regulatory um, behaviours that they have. Yeah. Um, children with Down syndrome often have a lot of. Um, I guess problems with balance which yeah. can make them unsafe in the community anything that's going to strengthen their joints and their muscles is mm. going to make a huge difference to them and all of these exercises are transferable okay. absolutely because yeah. poor muscle tone is one of the big things with down my son mm. has down so yeah. that's why i was wondering um autism is one group but yeah. then you've got mm. um, and it crosses over i'm sure some of the symptoms yeah. do cross over into downs too yeah but more so with the muscle tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not sure with autistic kids whether they have the same sort of issues with muscle tone. It's not the same. It's not the same, right? No. So the exercises that are illustrated here would they be safe enough for kids with poor muscle tone They'd and joints? They'd be fantastic. Yeah. 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 Oh, they would be okay, because it's just going to build all of that strength, and the more strength yeah. they have, the more tone they have. So yeah. and really sure. help with some of that hypermobility that they have. Yeah, I yeah. would recommend, um, like I said in the presentation, just starting off with a chair and building up before getting mm -hmm. to the balance ball. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is quite difficult, um, yeah. even for me, but that's a smaller ball, so I find it a little more challenging. It is something that they could progress to definitely and would definitely help with all those areas of muscle tone and balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my second question is regarding these agencies that you mentioned to, do they cater for all disability group types or just specific disability groups? A lot of them are to lots of different disability okay. groups. I think OTFC is probably more for autism, but they would they would cater to other disabilities. Mm -hmm. It would be worthwhile speaking to them to find out yeah. what they can offer. 
Yeah, because I'm also wondering in terms of any information through doctors or a current physio to pass on to them with certain restrictions or if there are other um, pre-existing medical conditions? Yeah, yeah. the OTs That's there something. can do an assessment as well. Okay. Um, so they'd be able to go through all of that and be in contact with your GP too. Yeah, um, okay. But things like Novita Fitness being run by a physio, they're aware yeah. of all of those conditions too. And like I said, there's an yeah. initial assessment. Mm. So they'll actually go through and work out what's going to be most beneficial for your child. And yeah. Because mm. it can be overwhelming, and I, um, I am actually looking for community agencies for my son. It's one thing to do a one to one, but something more recreational that it maybe yeah. involves other kids. Yeah. Because it's really difficult to find recreational sports for children with disabilities, yeah. um, and that's the one barrier I have found. Yeah. Because you want expertise, you want trained professionals yeah. at the actual centre, um, so. That's why I wanted to know basically if they cater for all yeah. or some or... Yeah, yeah. Okay. YMC LEAP would definitely be able to point you in the right direction okay. for that. They, you just have to ring them up, let them every, let them know everything yeah. that you would like them to know. They'll take all of that into consideration okay. and then find out what best suits you. <laughs> um, UniSA is more of a one-to-one -one type therapy, okay. but they will also take all of that into consideration mm. as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. And things like martial arts, like Taekwondo, and there's Elizabeth Judo as well. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things are a lot more of a social situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what is good to know, which ones are more recreational, social, mm -hmm. which ones are more therapeutic, yeah. one to one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thanks. Any other questions? Can I ask, if my son can ride his bike, yes. mm -hmm. then for bike riding or the exercise you introduce, which one will be better for? Cardio. Riding your bike is better. better. So yeah. if he can do an activity like that for up to 60 minutes a day, so he can do you know three blocks of 20 minutes or less, yeah. you know that's going to be beneficial. But their strength exercises, if he can do that, how old is he? Um, almost 12. I think he will prefer to ride a bike ride. Yeah. If I ask him to do exercise like this, he may throw a tantrum. Yeah. Because he enjoy bike more. So. Yeah. I, my my question is if he already enjoy bike riding, yeah. so that'll be good enough. Yeah, well if he can do that every day that's great. Yeah, almost every day. If he can yeah. do some strength exercises, yeah. you can get him running up and down stairs even, that's gonna help with the strength in his lower limbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that would be useful. Yeah. Um, I mean they're recommending that you do that two to three times a week when you're younger. Yeah. So if if he can fit something like that in. Yeah. Thank you.